section 3.6, chain rule, page 7. We want to find the equation of a tangent line to the curve defined by x equals secant t and y equals tangent t at t equals pi over 6. So if we start to set this up, we want uh, y minus something equals the slope times x minus something. And for this one, we don't know what um, x or y is. We only know what the t value is. Right here is going to be x evaluated at pi over 6, which is the secant of pi over 6. Pi over 6 right here. Cosine there is square root 3 over 2, so secant is 2 over square root 3. If we rationalize, that's 2 square root 3 over 3. Y's. This spot is y evaluated at pi over 6. So the tangent of pi over 6, 1 half over square root 3 over 2. 1 over square root 3, if we rationalize, square root 3 over 3. Okay. Right here is slope. And since this is equation of a line in terms of y's and x's, the slope we're looking for is dy dx at pi over 6. Well, we don't have an equation for y's and x's, so again, we're going to come up here and let's find these derivatives in terms of t. dx dt is the derivative of secant. That's secant t tangent t. And uh, dy dt will be the derivative of tangent or secant squared t. So dy dx is dy dt divided by dx dt, which is secant squared t over secant t tangent t. And we see one of those secants divide out. So this derivative is just secant t divided by tangent t, and we'll have to go back and evaluate this at pi over 6, dy dx at t equals pi over 6, oh, I should have put equals t over here, that's going to be the secant of pi over 6 over the tangent of pi over 6. Secant pi over 6, we figured out a couple of minutes ago. That was 2 square root 3 over 3. Tangent of pi over 6, square root 3 over 3. And we end up with just 2. There's the slope. 2. There we go. There's that tangent line. All right, now come down here and let's look at this one. Oh boy, um, f composition g prime at the given value of x. So we have this function f of u and this function g of x, and we want to find the composition's derivative at x is negative 1. So let's just look over here. We want to find f of g prime. If we write that out, it's nested notation. This is f of g of x prime. And if we work on through that, um, we have these nested functions again, a composition. So 
first function, or the outside most, f prime of g of x times g prime of x. But now we want this at x equals negative 1. at negative 1. Uh, I don't like that notation. That looks like times negative 1. Let's do this. At x equals negative 1. And then subbing in, this is f prime of g of negative 1 times g prime of negative 1. Oh boy, now you've done these before, you've done these with a table, where at this point you went and you looked up what g of negative 1 was on a table. We don't have a table anymore, we have the actual functions now. So we can come right back over here and figure out what g of negative 1 is. g of negative 1 is 1 over 1 minus a negative 1, and that's going to be a half. We have f prime of a half times g prime of negative 1. Now look at this. This says find f prime of a half. Well, let's come over here and let's find f prime. First thing, though, let's rewrite that f function as 1 minus u to the negative 1. Then we don't have to do a quotient rule. And this will give us f prime is the derivative of 1 is nothing. This negative 1 comes down, turns that positive. We have u to the negative 2. And let's write this then as 1 over u squared. Now we wanted f prime of a half. So that's 1 over a half squared, 1 divided by a fourth, which is 4. That bit's 4. Now, let's find this one, g prime at negative 1. Here's g, let's find g prime. Again, I think I'm going to rewrite that g of x. Uh, so I don't have a quotient rule. So how about 1 minus x to the negative first? Then when we do that derivative, we'll have negative 1 times a 1 minus x to the negative 2. Don't forget, times the derivative of the inside, negative 1. And that is sweet because the negative 1 times the negative 1 become a positive 1. And g prime then is just 1 over 1 minus x squared. And g prime of negative 1 is 1 over a 1 minus a negative 1 squared. 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. Oh, let me move this so you can see what I just wrote. 1 over a 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. We're going to take that 1 fourth right up here, and 4 times a fourth, 1. Perfect. Thank you.